Hi there BMW owners. Today in your 2019 BMW X3, we're gonna be taking a look at and showing you how to install Stealth's Hitch Rack Receiver. And this is what our hitch looks like when it's installed. And you're probably wondering, well, where in the world is it? I don't see anything down here, nothing below. Under here, you can see that the hitch is completely hidden behind the fascia. And even if you were looking at eye level with the bottom of the fascia, you wouldn't even notice it was there. But if we remove the rubber end from the attachment mechanism here at the bottom, our accessories for our stealth hitch can slide right into it. We've got our receiver end here, which accepts your typical two inch accessories. And it just slides right up into the hole and clicks into place. Now, before we use our accessory, we always wanna make sure that we've locked it and the lock is found on the opposite side. To lock it, you'll simply press in on the tab and then we can put our dust cap on to keep out any dirt, debris and moisture. And by simply clicking it in, we now have a two inch by two inch receiver here at the back of our vehicle. This is gonna be great for all of your accessories. One of the things you do wanna remember with this receiver here is that it is only designed for accessories. You cannot place a draw bar in it and perform any towing with it. If you would like to do some towing with your new hitch, there is a ball mount that is available from Stealth Hitch, and this one will click in just like our receiver did here, but this one is rated for towing, offering a maximum gross towing capacity of 6,000 pounds. You'll find this included with the tow package that also includes wiring, so that way you can ensure you're DOT compliant in all states when hauling your trailer. Our receiver here uses a 5 8 inch hitch pin and clip. Now one doesn't come included with the hitch, but we've got plenty available here at eTrailer.com. I've also got some measurements for you now to help you in deciding on your accessories. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of the rear bumper, it's about one inch. And that's important when determining if any of your folding accessories can be placed in the upright storage position without contacting the bumper. And from the ground to the top inside into the receiver tube, it measures about 12 and a half inches. That's important when determining if you need a raised shank on any of your accessories. And since this one is so low, I do recommend a raised shank on your accessories. And if you picked up the towing kit, you'll also receive safety chain loops that you can add onto your hitch. Now you do wanna keep in mind that these safety chain loops do not come with your regular hitch, only with the towing package and are added on. Now that we've gone over some of the features, why don't you follow along with me in the shop where we will get this hitch installed you're about to become very familiar with the back end of your BMW. We'll begin our installation by opening our lift gate and removing the panels located on each side that'll give us access to the rear of our taillights. These come off by just gripping the handle and pulling outward, then you can lift up and set it aside. We now have access to the back. Our electrical connector for our taillight is located inside of this little slit in this cloth here. You can see the connector there. So we'll need to press on the release tab and then pull it outward. The release tab's over here. You'll likely need a screwdriver to press that over and then you can pull out. Once we've got our connector disconnected, we can repeat this same process over on the other side. Here you can get a little bit of a closer look at the release tab here on the back side, and this is where I was putting the screwdriver. I'm just giving it a little twist to release it. We'll then remove a bolt here on the inside with a 10 millimeter socket. We'll then do the same thing on the other side to disconnect our electrical connector and uh, remove our bolt. On the passenger side though, there are two pins that we'll need to take out to get access to where that connector is. So we'll use our screwdriver to just pop out the center of the tab and then we can pull the whole pin out. Do the same thing with the other one located up here. And here we have the connector on our passenger side. Now on the outside, we have a plastic push pin right here. And we're going to remove that with our screwdriver as well. You'll need a very small blade 
because you'll need to get up underneath the tab and it's a very tightly fitted tab. Once you get underneath of it, then you can just pry it up until it comes out. And then we can take the cover off there to reveal two nuts on the inside that we'll need to remove using a 10 millimeter socket. With both the nuts removed, our assembly will just slide out and we can set it aside. We'll remove the other side in the exact same way. With our taillights out of the way, those are both located below them. We'll remove with an eight millimeter socket. There's one on the other side as well. Our reflectors located below our taillights will need to be removed. So we're gonna put a trim panel tool behind that and then gently pry out on We'll then set it aside and we'll remove this one using an eight millimeter socket. We'll do the same thing over on the other side. We'll now need to remove the rivets from the trim piece on our inner fender at the rear of the vehicle. There's three pins we're gonna remove and you'll need to drill these out right at the center to remove them. Once you draw out the center, then you can just pull the pin out. Once all the rivets are removed from this side, we'll do the same thing over on the other side. Well, now I need to remove our trim piece here. We can do this by just pulling outwards on it. Just carefully kind of working our way up. Once we get up to this point, we don't really need to go any further because we just need to be able to remove the bolt located behind it here, as well as the one down there. We'll remove these bolts with an eight millimeter socket. With the trim removed on both sides, we can then head underneath the vehicle and there are several bolts we're gonna to have to take out. We'll remove each of the three bolts that we have here on the outside, as well as the four bolts that run along the back side. And we're gonna do each side for those. We'll use an eight millimeter socket to remove them. We'll also remove the undershield here in the middle. There's several fasteners that run around the outside of this undershield. Again, we'll use our eight millimeter socket. We'll then just set our panel aside. We can now start removing our fascia. We're gonna start on the outside by releasing it from our fender. And we're just working our way back till we get to our tail lights. And once we get to that point, that's a good stopping point, and then go on the other side and release that side. We can then come to the center of the vehicle to finish removing it. These tabs here under the tail light, if you're having a difficult time getting these to release, if you know, if just giving it a nice tug's not working for you, then you can take a small screwdriver and go in there to press the tab down to allow it to release. In most cases, you don't need to do this. You can just give it a nice little tug. But if it's, it is fighting you, you can just give it a little pry. Once they're released all the way around, we can then just pull straight rearward. We're gonna tip back slightly with it and then check for any electrical connectors. We've got one here on the passenger side, so we're gonna press in on the release tabs there and disconnect that connector. We can then set our fascia aside where it won't get damaged. We can now remove the plastic push pins that hold the plastic piece onto our bumper beam here. There are six of those. We're just gonna pop out the center with our screwdriver this is very similar to the ones we did on the inside of the vehicle to access our taillight wiring. And 
And we're just gonna let this piece just hang out right down here. Now there is a piece right there that we are gonna remove. You can use a trim panel tool or a pair of needle nose pliers. We just wanna get behind it and pop that out. And then we can just set this aside. We'll just set it up top here to where it's out of our way. With our fascia removed, we can then take out the nuts that's holding our exhaust hangers on. We'll use our 13 millimeter socket to remove the nut on each side. We can now remove our bumper beam. There's two nuts on each side that we'll need to remove. What I like to do is though, on the top nut on each side, because it's a little bit easier to access, I'll remove that one with my 18 millimeter socket, but I won't take it all the way off just yet. I'm gonna bring it out right out to about the end. And we're just gonna let it hang out there. So this way, as I'm removing the rest of the hardware, we've got a nut that'll catch it so it can't fall all the way off. Now that we've got all of our hardware loose, those last nuts that we had on there, just a couple threads to hold it on, we can take those off. Cause this way you can kind of like rest your hip against it or something to ensure it doesn't fall. We can then slide our bumper beam rearward and we're just gonna set it right down because we're gonna be going right back on now, sandwiching our hitch in between the bumper beam. We'll take our hitch now, and we're gonna slide the top set of holes on the studs first, and then roll the hitch into place. We can then grab our bumper beam, and we're going to do basically the same thing, getting the top one started first. and then just rolling the bottom ones into position. We can then reinstall our hardware that we had removed previously. We can now tighten our nuts back down using our 18 millimeter socket again. We can now go back and torque our bolts to the specifications found in our instructions. We can now install the latching mechanism. This is going to slide in between the receiver brace that we just installed. We're then going to take the long copper bolts, colored bolts that come in our kit, and slide them through. We want to make sure that our handle here is on the passenger side, and that our bolts are sliding in from the passenger side towards the driver's side. We can then secure it with nylon locking nuts on the other side. Now once we've got those bolts tightened and torqued, we'll need to trim out our under shield and we can begin reinstalling our fascia in reverse order of how we removed it. Here we have our undershield and I've gone ahead and marked out the area that we're gonna be trimming out. So we can just go ahead and take a pair of scissors to this. It's a fairly soft material. It's kind of like a uh, cardboard with a fabric over it. So we're just going to trim this out all the way around. And now we've got it all cut up. Make sure to install your electrical connector when going back together with your fascia. And I find it usually to be easier to start by lining up the back here, just kind of getting it set into position. Once you've got everything snapped in place all the way around, you can then reinstall your fasteners. Make sure to put those in before snapping in your trim piece. We can also reinstall our taillight assemblies. Don't forget the bolt on the inside 
I like to get that bolt started before tightening down the outer ones just to make sure that I can still get it to line up properly. Then we can go back and tighten down the outer ones. And your electrical connectors as well. Can be difficult to line it back up since uh, the covering that's over it. So just feel around in there with your hands until you can get it in the slot. The rivets that we had removed we will be replacing with push pins that come in our kit. So these will just simply press into place where your rivet used to go and then you'll press in on the center tab. We can then remove the rubber cup from the bottom of the unit. If you're not planning on using it, you can just leave it there. But if you are planning on using it, you'll remove that. We can grab our lever then, twist it, make sure it's all the way twisted with the top towards the front of the vehicle. We can then take our receiver, slide it up into the bottom until it clicks in place. And then we want to make sure that we press in on the lock tab on the other side to ensure that it stays on. You want to make sure you have the lever turned all the way forward. It should click and lock in. So you just hit this little bit of movement like this. And then the receiver will slide in the bottom and you can just push it into place. Once it clicks in, we can press in on the lock on the opposite side. We're now ready to load up our favorite accessories and hit the road. And that completes our look at Stealth Hitch rack receiver on our 2019 BMW X3.